Ooh, it is a hot day today. We got some Total War Three Kingdoms, in-engine trailer, and an awesome little blog. So today what I wanna go over is that in-engine trailer. We'll let it play out. I'll pause it at certain moments. We'll talk about some of the history and some of the lore of that time. Uh, after that, we'll then go into a little bit about the blog posts that they talked about and kind of what, what really cool things that they bring up and some feature sets that they talk about for Three Kingdoms. Keep in mind, this is really a lot of like teaser action, so there's not like there's a ton to go off of here. Um, as also a heads up, I tried to really get the uh, pronunciation of anything right or uh, 100% right, so we'll see how that goes too. It's always going to be fun for me, um, but we'll just kind of let's just let's just let's just let it roll in my and I'll, I'll sit in my fire here. God, it's so awesome. So obviously this is a nice opening shot here. This is our lovely Sal Sal, who we're about to hear a little bit more about. Um, but I don't know if this is really takes place right at the uh, Yellow Turban Rebellion or where this is really kicking off. Because the what's happening right now is in Sal Sal's earlier career, he, he had the Yellow Turban Rebellion. If any of you have played the Dynasty Warriors games as kind of like far-fetched as those are from the Three Kingdoms, um, the, the the romance of the three, three kingdoms it's a good little barometer for those of us in the western culture to kind of at least get uh, uh, some bearing on on, on what our, our timeline is like so what what happens is after the uh, yellow Turban rebellion uh dong Zhuo, uh basically under it, it's kind of this weird situation um yuan chu basically says okay hey i want you to go depose the emperor and put in a puppet emperor emperor jian and uh, Dong Zhuo says, or Dong Zhu says, yeah, okay, whatever, sure. And then the people that were in charge of that, who was uh, basically the Empress Dowager's brother, uh, He Jin, uh, or He Jin, gets killed by the ten attendants, which are these 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 influential eunuchs. And what happens is, <laughs> um, when they kill He Jin, the people who actually know about the plot by Yuan Chuao to put uh, to to have Dong Zhuo uh, take or Dong Zhu take. Uh, Emperor Jean and put him in power are, are, are now gone. So for the most part, um, this is a really interesting par uh, part of the history of everything because right after the Yellow Turban Rebellion, or at least I think it's like a, a, almost a year ago after after the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Cao Cao gets summoned to the capital of Luoyang to basically say, hey, we need to we need to make a coalition against Dong Zhuo or Dong Zhu. I keep fucking his name up against Dong Zhu, and um, uh, we want you to have essentially lead it. So Cao Cao stoked on that, right? Uh, he essentially he assembles the Army of the Western Garden, which is a really awesome name, which falls apart, and eventually they they make this true coalition against Dong Zhuo that actually goes ahead. And as we kind of see things play out here. There we go. Tyranny. Dong Zhuo. There, we'll, I'll, I'll pronounce it properly. Um, we have here uh, Yuan, or Yun Shui, or Shuo, um, and Cao Cao, kind of talking over a lovely Yuan board Xiao, of Go. My friend, leader of the coalition. And this is the leader of the coalition again against Dong Zhuo. Uh, they, they are still trying to remove him because he is trying to take uh, Emperor Zhan and and pretty much appoint himself as. Um, I think it's like Chancellor of State or something like that. But basically, he's saying that he wants to use Emperor Jian as a as a, a puppet emperor to do all of his bidding for him. Which is funny because uh, what future what, what the the future for Cao Cao kind of plays a little heavily into that role. Together, we will put this chaos to an end. Some battles kicking off here. Now this battle right here, this part where um, uh, Yuan Chua is like, mm, nah, I'm walking out of this. It's a little bit different in the way the actual history worked. And, and this is, I mean, this is the presentation of a trailer, so it's not going to be, you know, 100% historically accurate. There's a whole narrative behind it. So uh, Zhu Rong actually defeats uh, Cao Cao. And this is a point where uh, Sun Zhan and Cao Cao said to uh, uh, Yuan Shu, like or Yuan Shu, hey, we want to go pr or, uh, pursue Dong Zhuo. We want to go make sure that he doesn't have a chance to solidify his position and maintain control of the Han Dynasty uh, with Emperor Jian. And Yuan Shu says, no, no, don't, just let him, let him kind of do his own thing. And the the result is 
him abandoning him right here. Oh, reverse that a little bit more. Him kind of like walking away, turning the other shoulder. Uh, in the history, it wasn't like that. It was a whole different portion of the of the region. It was like in like not, not Susano, but um, uh, Swanzao. So it's a whole different area. It was it was west of where they were actually fighting. So <clears throat> what happens is this dissolves the coalition entirely. You can clearly see here, South Sal is like, hey, here's the middle finger guy. And this sparks a giant civil war throughout the entirety of um, the central central Han dynasty, the, the central portion of uh, China. And this is where you get, um, which will be significant here soon. Wait a little bit longer. I mean, they make it look like... Oh, I know who that guy is. Um, they make it look like Cao Cao immediately leaves uh, uh, Yuan Chao's accompaniment. And that's not true. They, they kind of still fight together during what is essentially the, the, the subsequent conquests of Zhu province, Xi province, Qing, um, all of these, these, the Yan province, all of these several provinces that are, that are slowly kind of coming under um, these three emperors. And essentially... You get the beginning of the Romance three King of the Three Kingdoms in this whole stage that's been set. And here he is, probably my favorite character of all of uh, we, which is uh, Zhao Hodwin. Um, I, I've always loved this character, I always played him. It's weird that he doesn't have a gigantic, huge sword in this, I don't know why. At this point in history too, he has both of his eyes. But um, we see, like, uh, reversing just a little bit, they don't immediately jump to war with one another. There is a little bit of a time in between that. And um, we'll talk about that with uh, Leo Bay, who we're about to get into. Let this kind of play out, though, because it's a great goddamn trailer. Will be brought to order. Go is going well. For I would rather betray the world. Betray me. And there we go. Ah, a new opponent. Let us begin. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Leo Bay here at the end or who it is. I I'm going to assume it's maybe Leo Bay because there's an interesting point in the history here. So uh, you've got this 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 lot this large battle that kind of proceeds against a lot of these other elements and essentially you have this 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 two-pronged not like not a coalition but this fight during all these warlord states and you've got two grand alliances on one hand um you've got yuan shu which is not is different than yuan shao um tao qian uh, gong sun zan and then on the other side of that, you have Yuan Shuao, who we just talked about, uh, Cao Cao, and Liu Biao. Um, on the, uh, the, the aforementioned, the first alliance, Liu Bei is a part of that alliance. And this is all for pretty much taking over the uh, Qing and Xi provinces. And this is this grand war between these, I guess you could say four on three, more or less, but these warlords. And what ends up happening, actually, is that Cao Cao and Liu Bei are fighting each other throughout this just grand succession, this, this fight over um, what essentially uh, is another province, Zhu province, uh, Zhu province, sorry. Um, and eventually, like, Liu Bei loses to Lu Bu. And if you guys remember Lu Bu from uh, 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 Romance of the Three Kingdoms, he's probably the biggest badass in, in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Like, he's everyone's most feared opponent. And essentially, he flees from Lu Bu, and he goes and becomes the, pro the governor of Yu province, because Cao Cao basically says, hey, I actually now have control of Emperor Jian through, you know, the puppetry that we were afraid of with Dong Zhuo. So I'm going to appoint you the governor of Yu province. You, Liu Bei, can come to me for aid, for, for shelter. And I think that's this point right here. And it's, it's kind of funny because it's like, it, there's so much that goes on between this point and th this point, and even this point, that it's like, like, 
five years have passed in that in that in that whole time. So I'm sorry if this is so confusing, but you can only imagine what reading the Three Kingdoms is like because a lot of it has to do with the flowery and the romance of the of the duels, what happens in between these characters, the love triangles that uh, that kind of appear between these characters. I mean. Liu Bei and Cao Cao, after this point, actually team up to defeat Liu Bu and execute. Finally, finally gets killed uh, at the Battle of Xiapi. And then that's huge because for 10 years, like everyone was just terrified of this guy. So um, I'm sorry again if it is so confusing, but to just kind of summarize real quickly for you guys, you have the uh, coalition of Deng Zhuo against Deng Zhuo, which just happens right here. Deng Zhuo, Deng Zhuo. Um, that coalition falls apart towards the end. You've got this point where. Where, where, where are you? Where Cao Cao watches uh, Yuan Shu uh, leave him. Yet at our that play out a little desperate. bit. And this is where uh, Zhu Rong defeats him. And then eventually you have that grand coalition in uh, or the, 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 the big war in the Ji and Qing provinces between uh, Liu Bei and Cao Cao's respective armies. And then the eventual coming together of uh, Liu Bei and Cao Cao. So... Hopefully now that makes a little more sense that I've kind of summarized it. I'm so sorry if it is hard to understand uh, or, or it is kind of convoluted because, again, it is a very difficult book to read and, and kind of uh, wade your way through. And for those of you that are, are native speaking to uh, Mandarin or any dialect of Chinese, I'm so sorry for my pronunciations. But let's talk a bit about the blog here. So we got our lovely, you know, Three Kingdoms working with the romanticized history. And what we really get here is that a couple things. A, they're pushing the release of the game back. They want to spend some more time, really make sure that it is uh, released properly. It launches in spring of 2019. It was originally supposed to launch the end of this year. And I'll be honest with you, I'm really excited that a spring 2019 is the, is the launch date because this is the first time we've seen it since the January trailer. So it makes a lot of sense that we're getting that kind of pushback. Um, the other teams can work a little bit more on Total War Warhammer 2. Maybe some more on Warhammer 3 because we've, we've gotten some hints of that happening as well. Some of the other content for Total War. But um, in this blog, they, they talk about, you know, why did they choose the Three Kingdoms, China? And it, it made a lot of sense. A, a lot of people of the Total War franchise wanted a Total War base in Three Kingdoms, China. I did. I've always wanted it. I thought it was, I think it's an amazing period. Um, outside of Sengoku period, Japan, it's one of my favorite Eastern um periods of history antiquity so i'm really i'm really stoked to see that that you see them kind of talk about that a little bit in here it's a thrilling period and stories have been endlessly told and retold over the centuries what this should say is dynasty warriors uh one through i think what number are we on uh 453 yeah episode 453 of dynasty warriors that's what that should be um thanks koei now um what they talk about in these next kind of thing a couple things here is they talk about you know what what their motivation what their um their subject text are or what their, what their kind of motivation is coming from as far as which edition, I guess, of uh, the Three Kingdoms we're looking at, or Chen Chuao's uh, Century Text, Records of the Three Kingdoms. Um, then they get down to the big stuff, which is the difference between classic and romantic mode. So you, we're going to have two different modes here. A classic mode that plays out like a historical total war, like Rome, like Emperor, I'm sorry, Empire, like Medieval, or a romanticized version, which is very similar to how you would play in any one of these game, any one of this, um, any one of the games that kind of popularized the Romance of Three Kingdoms. So something more akin to Total War Warhammer One, Two, and, and or subsequently Three, where you have a lord on the battlefield that can wade through um, tons and tons of even says right here. By default, we adhere to the romanticized view. These characters can hold their own against hundreds of rank and file soldiers. They'll appear as single character units and fight like heroes from Long Zhuo, uh, Guangzhong's epic. In classic mode, they'll appear in battle the way you might expect a classic Total War general to do. They're only human and they will march into a battle at the center of a bodyguard unit. So this is a really, really good way for, for Creative Assembly for Total War to hit two angles. One that um, people always want to see, you know, they, they want that... Um, they, they want to have access to the classic mode, the, the historical mode, but they also want access to maybe the romanticized mode because they only came into the series recently with um, Total War Warhammer. So it really kind of, it, it scratches two itches and I'm really excited about that. Uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit more here that they're, they're talking more about the kind of narrative and how that's going to be kind of 
uh, driven and how that how that works out a lot and how they're consulting with a lot of individuals that are heavy in the historical portion of this to make sure it is historically and culture, culturally um, authentic. So that's really cool to see. But again, there's not a whole ton to go off here, uh, but I, I'm really excited to see here what we get with uh, Total War Romance of the Three Kingdoms here, or The Three Kingdoms. Hopefully we'll find out more next week with E3 coming out, and uh, I'll be able to cover that with you guys as well. But I wanted to get some uh, some history out of your way, guys, some lore, and talk about some of these great reveals that came out here today. Hopefully this gives you a really good idea of what the hell is going on in the timeline, who these characters are, what's coming out with the game, and uh, my poor, poor pronunciation of uh, Mandarin. God, I'm so bad at this shit. But thanks for watching here today, guys. Have a good one. And don't don't forget to comment on anything that you're excited about about this. And I want to hear what it is that you guys are really stoked about with uh, Three Kingdoms or maybe what you're disappointed about. I want to get your guys' uh, opinions and barometer and all that stuff. But thanks for watching here today, guys. Have a good one and take care.